Brandon, uh, part of what it was funny, uh, just a little, little story on the hiring session. Do you remember what I asked you? I asked you a lot of things. Which one? Yeah. <laughs> but one of the things when I was explaining the responsibilities and the duties of a boilermaker in the Union Pacific Steam Shop is I want to be able to take and hang you from your feet in a 50 mile an hour wind and you still got to be able to put a certified weld. <laughs> so that was kind of the criteria. Yeah, and he had this puzzled look on his face when I said, okay. Yeah, that's what I wanted. But yeah, he's just an outstanding welder and uh, he's been with us uh, for some time now. You got a lot of trips in it. He was, he was with us all last year. So, yep. He was the one that came up with that brilliant idea about the uh, the hot wash. Oh, yeah, yeah like Sacramento. Yeah. So it's I part just, of it, yeah. Yeah, no, I no, just trip. This is what I want. Figure it out. So I sure appreciate you guys. If anybody would like, you can step up into the cab. If anybody wants to. Watch your step. All kinds of things. The lighting is a little bit. Why don't we let's go? Let's go uh, like four or five at a time. Come on up. We got carpeting protecting our new floor. <laughs> there you go. That's smart. Yep. Yep. steam operation there was actually a lot of competition between the suppliers that supplied the railroad with various components and uh, this particular design was made by the Dodge superheater company and uh, the Union Pacific I'm sure at one point in time tried them out but in the later years they they used the superheater company or Alaska there's their design well we like to go back to the Union Pacific standard practices and, and what the UP did. UP was a, an industry leader. I know you guys have heard me say this, but they knew what they were doing with steam locomotives. So what we did is our staff made some dies so we could manufacture these ourselves. It's a little bit of a painstaking process, but in the end, we have ownership of the dies. We have the knowledge and the ability to manufacture them in-house, and we have all the tooling necessary to apply them because there is a process of servicing equipment. The superheaters are no different. You just can't simply put them in the locomotive and leave them in there for years and years. It is required periodically that they require a certain degree of servicing. Hydro test them to make sure they can hold up to the pressure. <coughs> One of the things we do is we try to destroy them. We take them out of the engine and we subject them to very high pressure with the hopes that if they're bad, they will fail identify a defect where we can repair it. If they fail when they're out on the road, when they fail inside, they're very troublesome and it will invariably, depending on the degree of failure, it's going to cancel a trip or severely delay us. I've been involved in dealing with superheaters on the road and it's a miserable part of a steam locomotive. So anything that we can do out here in the time in the winter to save that type of heartache, that's what we're all about. So that's that's what this is, and, and they're manufacturing, you see just a bucket full of these things, and this will eventually become that representation there, and you can see that it's it's a different a different orientation. 
it's, in my view, it's a better design. This is a more substantial design. It will be welded together, and another piece will be welded to this, just as in the original design. And then I'll show you over here. Let's walk around. I'll show you the super. Oh, yeah. Let's see if you can see that. Today's modern welding process is it's easier and, and better. So we simply weld these together and kind of get a look and see. But that's a very, very nice design. Very rugged and it will hold. It will hold that unit in the right relationship when it's inside the flue. That's critical. Over time, these things are subjected to tremendous high heat in the flow of all the gases. You can see the rough life. Down here, it's not as hot. When you get toward the fire end down here, the firebox is only right about here. So the fire is burning in the firebox, and those gases, when we're producing 5,000 horsepower, the flame is actually extending into these fire tubes coming into contact with these elements. So these elements are made of a special metallurgy that all has to be certified. And they have to hold up to not only the 425 degrees of the saturated steam coming out of the dry pipe, but as they work their way through these, they make one, two, three, four. On their fourth pass, that steam temperature is pushing 700 degrees. And then it goes into the header, and then it goes down into the the, uh, the steam chest into the valve into the cylinder performs its work and out the stack it goes. So these things perform a very, very important, critical role in the operation of the steam work. Nearly every one of these clamps or these bands on the fire end were destroyed. Some of them were deformed and actually delaminating and coming apart. And when they do, they catch debris impurities from the fuel that we burn, sand, who knows what. The next thing you know, they start to plug up. As they start to degrade because of the high heat, they no longer hold these elements in the correct relationship in the tube. And over time, that interferes with the flow of gases in each one of the flues. And as you continue to lose those elements and they continue to form together, you're losing the efficiency of the engine. In extreme cases, you're getting very uneven temperature extremes, which will degrade the units further. And it just becomes a vicious cycle of deterioration until the unit fails. So part of the operation is we will take each and every one of these, and it takes a couple of men weeks to perform this. We'll clean it, we'll go through, give it a visual inspection, we'll take it over. We made a special manifold. We could subject it to 600 PSI. And then we will, with a brass hammer, we will work on them and see if we can't get any, any debris that comes out of them. Because that's an indication that you've got some stuff in here known as carryover. In a steam locomotive, we don't have the luxury of having perfect water everywhere we go. And the state of the tender and the condition of the tender is very deteriorated, so we've got a lot of rust and a lot of impurities in the water anyway. blow the engine down, that's what we're doing, is we're trying to get those impurities out of it. What happens when those impurities reach a certain point? The water is very dirty, and you've got a lot of debris, and a lot of froth, muck floating on top of that water surface in the boiler. If the fireman is not skilled, and he doesn't carry the water at the correct level, he carries it too high, that carryover works its way into the dry pipe. 
what happens when that gooey, frothy, foamy muck gets inside of a tube subjected to thousand degrees of temperature? It bakes on. And when it bakes on, it's once again, it slowly starts this gradual deterioration of efficiency, but eventually it will lead to the failure of these units. So the fireman and the engineer play a very critical role in the safe, efficient operation of the machinery. And this is one of the first things a bad fireman can wreck are your superheaters. Uh, aside from the obvious, carrying the water uh, catastrophically low, of course, is a detriment to everyone's life. But things that go on behind the scenes that you really don't realize until you've been around machinery like this for a while and you start to understand all those various factors and why it is so important to have a fireman that understands the cause and effect and he performs his job correctly because a fireman will tear your boiler up. Not only can he damage the flues and the stables from all the wild variations in temperature fluctuation if he doesn't know what he's doing, but if you've got a fireman that can keep her at 300 pounds, you've got a good man. The other, the other side of that is keeping the water level at the correct level and maintaining what we call the evaporative rate. That's the rate at which the locomotive is evaporating water, producing power. So all of that science and everything, it all pays serious dividends. And interestingly enough, is they have a responsibility when we're in here to make sure that all these processes are going correctly. So they know. Not only do they know what they have to do up there, but they have an understanding of what and why they need to do. Because they get to see these things in their disassembled state. We found one that was leaking. That's a very bad sign because these things have a lot of friends. If one of them is defective, What's different from all the other ones? They're the same assembly process, the same metallurgy. Well, luckily, we found a defect in one of these return vents here, which indicated it was closed off a little bit, and it wasn't getting the flow of steam, and therefore it had a lot of carryover in there. And then when we lay the locomotive up, that's the critical part. When we're out there running it, this stuff can't rust that much because it's high temperature and it's, it's got steam flow. When you put it away, that steam condenses. Try as you might, these things are very wet. So over the years, we've developed all types of ideas on how to lay these things up with special uh, solutions that we can put in there to guard against corrosion. But even at that, if the damage is done when the fireman makes the mistake of carrying the water too high, it gets the, the carryover in there, it gets baked on, and water gets between it and the metal nothing we can do about that. And it's a matter of time before they will destroy themselves. So it, it's likely that uh, this next year, this next winter, we'll make a whole new set of superheaters. We'll make all this stuff. We'll just make a new set. You know, I was hoping to get to 2019. That's when the 844 comes down for its next 1472 inspection. We may not make it. I'm still hopeful that we will but I'm, I'm gearing up to go ahead and just get a whole new set of units entered 